Welcome back to another video within Unit 7, where we have been looking a lot at pseudocode and some of the fundamentals behind programming. Today we're going to look at this term array, which I've borrowed from Unit 8 of the course, and I'm going to quickly go over the basics of arrays and how we implement them using pseudocode. So as you can see, the syllabus topics I've took is Unit 8. Okay, so I want you to understand the use of arrays, in particular a one-dimensional array, and how we write values into them and read values from them. We're going to use iteration to do so, so as we know, loop. And the reason why I've done this is that the next lesson, I'm going to go through some methods and algorithms that use all of the topics we've done so far to do with pseudocode. I'm going to put all the techniques together, including loops, if statements, and conditional statements, assigning variables, and just following basic sequencing with pseudocode. I'm going to put it all together, and we're going to look at some standard algorithms that we need to be aware of in terms of the Paper 2 exam and for just programming in general. So in Unit 8, I'm going to go through all the techniques that we've looked at so far, but using actual high-level programming languages. And in our case, I'm going to be using Python, but so far we've covered the basics in pseudocode, and hopefully you've managed to follow along, so that when we come to Unit 8, it's going to be much easier to understand, and you'll be able to progress much quicker when it comes to writing high-level programming languages. Okay, so let's get started. Now the word array refers to a list of items. Okay, when we store multiple values, but in a single structure, that's what it does. So far, in terms of storage, we've looked at the word variable, and we know that a variable stores a piece of data, but generally for one item and one item only. If we want to store multiple items, what we do is we create an array. So in the example here, on the left-hand side, I could create 30 variables for 30 pupils in a class. And as you can see, I've got the variable name with a piece of data being stored inside. And hopefully you've spotted the mistake. And what this should be is an arrow. If we're using GCSE pseudocode notation, it should look like this. Okay, so those who notice that, well done. If not, no problem, it's my mistake. These should be arrows. Okay, but 30 variables we would create and we'd put names inside them. Now, obviously that's doable. You would be able to do that in a program, but things could start to get messy and the program wouldn't flow as efficient as if we were to use an array. So here, is an array and it's called pupils. Okay, so rather than having pupil one, two, three, and so on, we just call it pupils and it contains a list of items. Now, the easiest way to spot an array is that it uses square brackets. This is for both pseudocode and most high level languages. And again, this should be an arrow. But as you can see, it's got a list of items inside one, two, and three. And this would carry on for the 30 pupils in this class. So rather than storing 30 different variables, we can just store all 30 items inside one structure called an array, and it just keeps it much cleaner, much more efficient. And once you understand how to use an array, your programming abilities will be able to just go up to that next level. So as I've mentioned, managing all of these variables separately would become very messy and could potentially lead to errors and just generally difficult to follow. Instead, an array can store all 30 items in one place. So one thing we need to mention when it comes to an array is that we've said it stores a collection of elements. When we're talking about elements, all elements have to be the same type. Now we haven't discussed data types just yet, but in this example, we can easily differentiate words from numbers. Okay, on the left, you can see the pink, we've got numbers, and on the right, we've got words, or in other words, strings. Now this isn't pseudocode, this is written in Python, but the pseudocode is very similar. It just have an arrow there instead, and an arrow there. Now back to my original point, all elements in the first one here are all numbers, okay? We can't mix and match. We can't put letters in this one, such as 10. This wouldn't work, okay? Likewise with the one on the right, which contains text or strings, we couldn't then put a number in the middle of them in this list. They all have to be the same type. Okay, so just thought I'd clear that up now. And again, I'll cover this in more detail when it comes to arrays in high-level languages. Okay, so it's one or the other when it comes to data types. So back to pseudocode. As we keep saying, it's a list of items. A one-dimensional array, which is all I want you to focus on now, is just storing things in a row. So one row of information. So the example that we've seen before was just a list of names. And here we're going to create an array that stores five numbers. In particular, five integers. So the word we use here to create an array is declare. The name of the array, we use the word array to confirm that it's an array that we're creating. And again, we use the square brackets just like before and determine how many elements are inside. So as you can see, this is gonna contain five elements starting at number one, going up to number five. 
Here I've said which type of data it's going to be, and it's going to be of whole numbers, or in other words, an integer. So now this array is created, I can store five integers inside, starting from number one, going up to number five. So now that it's created, what I can do is that I can use the assignment technique, which we've used earlier, in order to assign values into the array. Okay, so it's the exact same process as a variable, only this time we use the square brackets to indicate where about in the array we would like to store the data. So in this first example, I'm storing the number 10 into the position number one in the numbers array. So I'm just gonna write the numbers array here. And what will happen is that it's currently empty and it has five positions inside. I'm gonna talk more about this in a second, but this is called an index. Okay, so number 10 is put into position one. So 10 goes here. Go to the next line, numbers position two. So we're currently here. I put in the number 20. Then I go down to 30 and it fills up the array, stopping at position five because I've got no more space. So this stores the numbers in the array positions one to five, but we use the assignment statement using the arrow, which we've discussed when it comes to storing data inside of a variable. Okay, so this code on the left will put each of these numbers inside the array in those positions. Now I've briefly mentioned the word index there, and the index refers to the positions that are inside our array. Now what we have to be careful with when it comes to IGCSE is that the index starts from one when it comes to pseudocode. In most high level languages, the index usually starts from zero. As you can see here, the first position is zero. Now in Python or Java, this is the case. And because I've used these slides from a unit eight lesson, that's why you can see the number zero in the starting position here. Although you can still count one, two, three, four, five elements, but the difference is between pseudocode and an actual programming language is that it starts from zero in programming. In pseudocode, we start from one. Okay, just to make it a little bit easier. Here, index zero has the number 10, index one has the number 20, and so on and so forth. What we can also do is we can modify the elements after the array's been created. So in this case, if I want to change the number in the position number two, which is currently here, I can say 35 goes in this position. In pseudocode, I would use an arrow. And here, the number 30 would change to the number 35. So we can also use the assignment statement to modify elements inside after we've created the array. But again, we use the square brackets to indicate where we want to go using what we call the index to point to the correct position in the array. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our previous technique that we looked in last lesson, which was iteration. We're going to use a loop to output all the numbers in an array. Now the array that we've created, we know how many elements are inside. There are five. And because of this, I can use a count controlled loop in order to iterate a set number of times. And if you remember from last lesson, for i, i is set to one on the first run, it will stop at five and it will repeat this code inside five times. So when it comes to the actual instruction, output, we know what this does. Numbers is the name of the array. And we've used our square brackets and the position to print out what is currently one to take this element here. So 10 would be output. It loops round, goes to two. I is now two, goes here. It outputs 20 and so on and so forth. So again, we're using these square brackets to indicate where we want to go. But in this case, we are able to use a for loop and use the iteration method to determine where about we want to print out in the array. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. We are starting to combine these techniques in order to produce more advanced algorithms. So the output of this array would simply output 10, 20, 30, 40, and then 50. So this will be the output from this loop when it comes to this array. And then finally, we'll put all of that into practice and answer these questions. So by all means, give the video a pause and see if you can have a go yourself. And then the first question, write a simple pseudocode statement to declare an array called names that can store three strings. So if we remember, we have to use the word declare to create the array. We give the array a name, which is names. So declare names. We use a colon. We say that it's going to be an array with the numbers one to three as it can store three strings. And then we need to mention the data type, which is of string. Okay, so that's the array created. We use the word declare, we give it a name. We mention that it's an array and say how many elements are inside. In this case, it's one to three. And finally, we say what data type it's going to be and it's of string. If it was numbers, you would write of integer, 
But again, we haven't learned all the data type just yet, so don't worry too much. Then we're going to assign the names Alice, Bob, and Charlie to the names array. So if we remember, all we need to do is the same assignment statement as a variable. Instead, we use the name of the array, which is names. We mention the position. So names one is going to equal Alice. Names position two, we are going to set to Bob. And names position three, we are going to set to Charlie. Okay, and that's how we would assign the names into each position in the array. So currently, I'm just gonna draw the array at the top. It currently looks like this. Alice, Bob, and Charlie. Again, notice how we've used square brackets. These are very, very important. And notice how we separate each element with a comma. Okay, that's also important when it comes to an array. And again, if we go back to the first question and look at the index of what we created, we've got positions one, two, and three. So using those positions, we can now answer the next question. What will be displayed by the following pseudocode? Output names position two. So names is the array name, position two is Bob. So the output would simply be Bob. And finally, write a loop to store the numbers one to five in an array called numbers. So we're gonna use iteration in order to iterate and put five numbers in an array called numbers. So I'll do it over here, I've got a bit of space. The first thing we're gonna do is create the array. Okay, I'm gonna create an empty array and it's called numbers. Okay, it's an array that contains one to five and it's of, sorry for the space here, it's of integer, but I'm just gonna write of int. So again, we'll go into detail about data types later, but of integer means it's gonna contain numbers. Okay, but more importantly, we use the square brackets and we say that it's got five positions in, starting from one, going to five. Now the array's created, I can use a for loop as I know how many elements are inside. And what I can say is for i, one to five, meaning that one will be the first number that is assigned to the letter i. And then to store the numbers one to five, I'm going to write the name of the array, which is numbers in position i, which is currently one, I'm going to set to i, which means i is one and it's going to be stored in the position one, okay? Then I'm gonna say next i, so then when it loops around, i goes up to two, in position two, it assigns the number two, okay? So if I just do a demonstration of what's happening in the array here, so this is the numbers array, there are five positions inside, here are the numbers of the positions, on the first iteration, i is set to one, and we put the number one inside position one. So one goes there. It loops around, i becomes two, it assigns it in position two, and so on and so forth. Again, hopefully that's made sense. What we'll do in the next lesson, guys, is tie in all of the techniques that we've covered so far. So if you've made it this far and managed to follow along, then fantastic. You're really building a solid foundation for when it comes to the programming unit. And in the next lesson, we're going to look at some standard algorithms, but using all of the techniques that we've covered so far. So we're going to put it all together. We're going to use all our pieces of the jigsaw just to take our programming up to another level. And again, putting us in a good position when it comes to the paper two exam.